So we are finally at the finals. Um, we start with polynomials um, for the MIT 2023 integration uh, B uh, questions. So we had one question uh, for the 2023 integration B that uh, had the polynomial. Um, the others uh, you can find the solutions under the playlist of um, flow functions. So strictly polynomials, we had one question, and that was the integral of the square root of x squared plus 1 plus nested square root x to the power 4 plus x squared plus 1 integrating from negative a half to a half. So we're going to run quickly uh, through this solution. I had um, uploaded a video earlier on this uh, specific uh, topic uh, or question. Uh, but here is just to finish up and cap off uh, our look at polynomials and through the integration of MIT. So uh, moving on to how you can solve this question. Mm, the very outset, but it's a very difficult problem. So we'll attempt to solve it um, looking at the x to the power 4 plus x squared plus 1 uh, component that can be broken down as the product of x squared plus x plus 1 uh, times the square root of x squared minus x plus 1. Um, further, x squared plus 1 can be broken down as the sum of x squared plus x plus 1 over 2 and x squared minus x plus 1 over 2. So um, the x squared plus x plus, my, plus 1 over 2 can also be expressed as square root uh, to the power 2. Uh, and that allows us now to convert it into a binomial expansion of the two uh, elements. So that allows us to remove this square root sign and now we can have two separate uh, elements x squared plus x plus 1 over 2 and x squared minus x plus 1 over 2. Now we can separate this as two separate integrals of uh, those elements and we can dab the first component as integral one and the second uh, element as integral two uh, as encapsulated by the yellow uh, and the blue uh, rectangles uh, respectively. The first integral um, as has been expanded um, we can try to solve it uh, by looking at the x plus 1 over 2 squared component um, and equating it to root 3 over 2 uh, tan theta so that we can factor out the 3 over 4 uh, component uh, and thus uh, dx uh, d theta now becomes uh, root 3 over 2 sec squared theta, and therefore dx is uh, root 3 over 2 sec squared theta d theta. Now we can also look at uh, the limits. Look, when x is equals to negative a half, tan theta uh, becomes 0, and therefore theta is 0, the theta domain. And then when x is equals to a half, um, so a half plus a half means that tan theta becomes uh, root 3 over 2 tan theta equals to 1, and therefore tan theta equals that reciprocal root 3 over 2, which is 2 over root 3. And therefore theta becomes arctangent of 2 over uh, root 3. Um, and so now we can substitute the limits and the value for of x by in, substituting in the theta uh, component, which now allows us to integrate it in such a way that it's 1 over root 2 uh, from 0 to arctangent of uh, 2 over root 3, square root of 3 over 4 times square theta plus 3 over 4 and then we substitute in the dx value, which is root 3 over 2 sec squared theta d theta. And now we can pull out 
um, the constants, which is rho 3 over 4 root 2, and then uh, the integral part becomes tan squared plus 1, which is equals to 6 squared theta. Square root of 6 squared theta is uh, 6 theta, and therefore becomes 3 over 4 root 2, the integral of sec theta, sec squared theta, which is uh, sec uh, cube uh, theta. So um, the way we can integrate sec cube theta is by splitting it into two parts and using integration by parts, where now we can equate sec squared uh, theta to uh, dv and sec theta u. Since dv equals to um, equals to sec uh, squared theta, then v is equals to tan theta. And since again uh, u is uh, sec theta, du becomes sec theta tan theta, that's the derivative of sec theta. And so uh, knowing when tackling integration by parts that if u dv is the product on the left hand side, then the uh, solution is uv minus the integral of v du. So by substituting that in, we get now the integral of sec squared uh, cube theta is equal to sec theta tan theta minus sec theta tan squared theta um, at the integral sign. And then now uh, tan squared theta can be expanded as sec squared theta minus 1. That now results into the integral of uh, sec cube theta um, where um, sec cube uh, theta uh, can be also equated to the value i. So bringing uh, sec cube theta onto the left hand side, we get 2i, and therefore 2i is equal to sec theta tan theta, uh, integral of sec theta d theta. And so if i becomes half sec theta tan theta, when we divide both sides by 2, uh, plus the integral, half of the integral of sec uh, theta. Let's now focus on sec uh, theta. Uh, we can convert that and re-express it as 1 over cos theta. Uh, and by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by cos theta, we get uh, the integral of cos uh, theta over uh, cos squared theta. Um, by using the identity cos squared theta plus sin squared theta equals to 1, cos squared theta becomes 1 minus um, sine uh, squared theta, and then if we factorize uh, 1 minus sine squared theta, uh, we get uh, 1 minus sine theta plus 1, one pl uh, times 1 plus sine theta. Um, so that's uh, at the denominator. You um, can also now separate uh, those uh, fractions um into 1 over 1 minus sin theta plus 1 over 1 plus sin theta uh, divided by 2 and so we get integration of cos theta over 1 minus sin theta plus cos theta over 1 plus sin theta. We integrate that we get half of log uh, or natural logarithm of 1 minus sin theta within the absolute uh, brackets uh, plus a half of log 1 plus sine theta. Um, and using uh, the law of logarithm, um, we divide uh, 1 plus sine theta by 1 minus sine theta. We multiply the denominator by 1 plus sine theta and also denominator by the same value. Um, we get uh, 1 plus sine theta squared over 1 minus sine squared theta, uh, 1 minus sine squared theta now can be uh, re-expressed as cosine squared theta. So we get uh, half of log 
uh, 1 plus sine theta over cos squared theta. Express everything under this squared uh, bracket, therefore, is 1 plus sine theta over cosine theta. Um, if we now take the half uh, on the left hand side up so that we get the square root of whatever is uh, in there, um, and also by dividing, re expressing 1 over cos theta as sec theta and sine of, over cosine theta as tan theta. Uh, we get that the integration of sec theta is logarithm of uh, the absolute of sec theta plus tan theta. We use those absolute to ensure that we are taking the logarithm of positive values because that's where uh, the result is defined. So sec cube theta when integrated is half of sec theta tan theta plus half of uh, integral of sec theta, which is as shown in the derivation above, is half of logarithm absolute sec theta plus tan theta. Now bringing our limits in um, from minus half to half uh, in the x domain, which results into 0 to arctangent of 2 over root 3. Um, uh, sec cube theta, we get that to be equal to 3 over 4 root 2 half of sec theta tan theta plus half of log sec theta tan theta uh, from 0 to arctangent of 2 over root 3. Um, so which is easy because when you pull uh, the half outside we get 3 over 8 root 2 and then uh, we substitute in 2 uh, arctangent of 2 over root 3 um, and then also 0 as uh, shown here. Now sec in bracket uh, arctangent of 2 root 3 uh, equals to as shown here uh, the square root of 7 over 3. So if we substitute square root of 7 over 3 into the previous equation, um, we get um, 3 over uh, 8 uh, root 2 uh, times square root of 7 over 3 times 2 over root 3 because tan of arctangent of 2 over 3 just res results into 2 over square root of 3 and then log of root of 7 over 3 plus 2 over root 3. And therefore, that can be simplified into root 7 over 4 over root times root 2 plus 3 over 8 root 2 logarithm of 2 plus root 7 over root 3. So that's the result of the first integral. Um, and then we can now attack the second uh, integral uh, in the same manner uh, where we um, equate the x minus 1 over 2 component uh, to the same uh, 3 or uh, root 3 over 2 uh, tan theta, uh, such that dx d theta will be equal to uh, sec uh, 3 uh, root 3 over 2 sec squared theta. And dx, therefore, is square root of 3 over 2 sec squared theta d theta. Now, replacing the x's with the thetas, um, and also looking at the limits, first of all, when x is equals to minus half, tan theta is equals to minus 1, and therefore tan theta is, I mean, root 3 over 2 tan theta is equals to minus 1, and therefore tan theta is equals to negative 2 over root 3. And then theta therefore is equals to negative of arctangent 2 over root 3. Um, when x is equals to half, half minus half is equals to 0, therefore three, root 3 over 2 tan theta equals to 0, and therefore tan theta equals to 0. Theta therefore is equal to arctangent of 0, which is equals to 0. Um, so now just have to replace uh, the x's with the thetas, and therefore uh, 
the second integral now results into 1 over root 2, the integral of minus arctangent uh, 2 over root 3 uh, to 0 of square root 3 over 4 times square theta plus 3 over 4 times uh, root 3 over 2 sec square theta d theta, pulling out the root 3 uh, both under the square root sign and also uh, whatever is on the other side results into 3 over 4 root 2 integral of minus ta arctangent 2 over 3 to 0 of tan square theta under square root sign times sec square theta. This results back into sec cube theta. Um, and doing the same, applying the limits uh, also results into 3 over 4 root 2 uh, and then pulling times whatever is shown there, pulling the half out results in 3 over 8 root 2 uh, sec 0 times 0 uh, logarithm of sec 0 times 0. Sec 0 is 1, tan 0 is 0 and log of 1 is 0. So the first component results into 0 minus, um, since we already derived the value of sec uh, at tangent 2 over root 3, which is root 7 over 3, this time it being negative doesn't matter because cosine of a negative value results into a positive value, but tangent of that negative at tangent results into minus 2 root 3. So simplifying into uh, root 7 over 4 root 2 minus 3, 8 root 2 log 7 minus 2 over root 3. So that's the answer for the second integral. Now summing up integral 1 and integral 2 to get uh, the answer. Um, I mean, does it require uh, some further simplification? Um, so as you can see here, it's the sum of x squared plus x plus 1 over 2 plus the integral of x squared minus x plus 1 over 2, all under uh, square root sign, um, and then uh, that equals to uh, root 7 over uh, 4 root 2 plus 3 over 8 root times root 2 log of root 7 plus 2 over root 3 plus 7 over 4 times root 2 minus 3, 8 root 2 uh, log square root of 7 minus 2 over root 3. So the first constants add up into root 7 over 2 root 2. And then um, by using the log logarithm, uh, when we subtract, we are dividing under the log uh, sign. And then if we multiply the numerator and the numerator by the same value of uh, plus uh, of 7, square root of 7 plus 2, uh, we get um, the square of root 7 plus 2 over root 3, and then we take half up so that we get the square root, and finally we get the answer as being root 7 over 2 times root 2 plus 3 over 4 root 2 log of root square root of 7 plus 2 over root 3, and that's the final answer. Uh, very interesting problem.